This is Pastor Cannon. I want to thank you so much for being a part of this worship experience. Today's sermon, When Love Leads, Commitment Follows. We want you to learn, but most importantly, to grow in the word of Almighty God. So sit back, enjoy, and let us worship God. Calling your attention to verse 18 of this pericope, as I believe it serves as a good starting point and a good place for us to seek the will of God. For the Bible says, I tell you the truth. When you were younger, you dressed yourself and went where you wanted. But when you are old, you will stretch out your hands and someone else will dress you and lead you where you do not want to go. And my friends, with your encouragement today, I want to lift up this text, and if I could, for a brief moment, preach on this subject, when love leads, commitment follows. When love leads, commitment follows. My friends, growing up, back in the day, as I'm told, it was a time when we did not have cell phones and a time, y'all, without the aid or the assistance of the internet. And when you think about it, Brother Grant, to be honest, back in the day, it was not that bad at all. Can I get an amen from back in the day, folk? Let me put it this way. Growing up, y'all, without DoorDash and, and existing without Facebook, y'all, that was really a pretty good time, given the fact it was a more simpler space in time. But think about it. Back in the old days, B.C., before cable, somebody say Amen. There was no Spectrum, no DirecTV, no Comcast, or no Google Fiber Optic. There was no Bluetooth, no streaming, no download, and no iCloud. For, for, for we did our research, check this out, on Britannica and World Book Encyclopedia. We got recipes not online, but from a Betty Crocker cookbook. We looked up phone numbers in the yellow pages and the white pages. And we picked up merchandise from Sears, Montgomery Ward, Winn-Dixie, and the A&P. And Dr. Monroe, they were not delivered by Uber or UPS or FedEx or Amazon. Somebody say amen if you can. Back in the day, can you say back in the day? Back in the day before all of the creature comforts that we have grown accustomed to, as a child, y'all, I remember playing games like hide and seek, hopscotch, duck, duck, goose, green light, red light, jump rope, hula hoop, piggy in the middle, which one I'm going to keep up of the middle, knuckle bones, marbles, four square, dodgeball. I didn't like dodgeball because I was skinny and slow and I was always hit with the dodgeball. But my favorite game, y'all, was follow the leader. You see, follow the leader for, for, for my age group, y'all. It was an old school game of choice. But because not only were you in charge, shall we say, uh, of leading your playmates into an activity, uh, but you were ultimately given the responsibility of having them imitate you and your actions. 
let me say it this way. Uh, the primary function of leading the old school game of follow the leader as a kid's game, y'all, was not only that you were charged to lead your playmates into some activity, but you were ultimately given the responsibility of having them imitate your every move and action. And I think I need to set up base camp here right here and talk a little bit about being a child of God for those of us who call ourselves children of the most high God. Not only do we need to lead our lives in such a way that our playmates around us now who look at us as children of God and follow us as children of God, not only should we lead them into activities, but we ought to live a way that they want to imitate what we do. Let me back up and say that again. Uh, not only should we say follow the leader on the playground, but as a child of God, there ought to be somebody following you and somebody listening to you and somebody working with you and somebody desiring to be a part of what the Spirit of God has inside of you. Uh, as you lead them to imitate the works of Almighty God. You see, y'all, it, 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 is that not the command of the gospel of Jesus Christ to let your light so shine before humans that all others may see the goodness of the Lord? Is that not the call of grace that, behold, I stand at the door and knock, and if anyone will open the door, the Bible says, I will come in and sup with them. Is that not the invitation of the word that God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son that whosoever believes in him should not perish but have everlasting life? Uh, for you see, when, when, you, when you recognize what God does and how God moves in your life, that's where I've come up with my proposition today. When love leads, commitment follows. Come on, help me preach right there. When love leads, commitment follows. And I don't know who I'm speaking to in the audience or watching online right now, but I just I've had that suspicious imagination that you want to follow somebody who is leading in love. I, I just have the assumption, and it's bad to have an assumption, but I will go in and make it anyway that somebody wants to follow people with a loving spirit, and somebody wants to be around folk with a giving heart, and somebody wants to be in the company of folk who think more of others than they think of them. Is there anybody in here who would say, Reverend, that's where I am? And not only that, y'all, it means that the commitment will follow. You see, every day we can choose to let love lead. I believe commitment will follow. For love can lead in our conversations, and commitment will follow. I believe love can lead in our motivation, and commitment will follow. Love can empower, and commitment will follow. It can encourage, and commitment will follow. It can inspire. It can refresh. It can bless others. It can arouse hope. It can give courage. When we let love lead the smallest of things to the biggest of things, we let love ultimately win in our everyday life. And you know, this is the message that we find in John chapter 24 right here, Brother Grant. For we have this message, the last chapter of the Gospel of John, when John now records the words of Christ. And Christ comes back to speak to this disciple to which has denied him and basically said, I've come to love you, and as I love you, I want love to lead you to lead others. Okay, let me say it this way. What John writes the words of Christ and what God is saying to us, my friends, is that I want you to love in such a way that will lead others to me and to follow my will. Uh, you see, this happens after Peter has denied Christ. This happens after Peter has cut off Malchus' ear and Jesus swoops up and puts the ear back on his head. This, after, this is after Jesus has, has prayed in the Garden of Gethsemane and, and it says that, that their sweat dropped like, like, like drops of blood. This is after y'all Peter had broken bread with the disciples. This is after y'all that Peter has been with Jesus in all the miracles. This is 
after all of this. And now Jesus comes back to life. Jesus comes back from the resurrection of the dead. Jesus is in Peter's presence. And Jesus says, Peter, do you love me? It wasn't a question of, Peter, are we in a relationship? It was a question of, Peter, will you follow my commandments? Peter, do you love me? It's not necessary. Peter, do you have your name on the roll? Peter, do you have your boxes checked? Peter, have you done all the good things for the United Way and the NAACP and, and the Congressional Caucus? No, no. Peter, do you love me? Peter, if you love me, then your commandments will come back. And there ought to be something in your life, Peter, something in your walk, Peter, something in your talk, Peter. Am I talking to Peter this morning? There ought to be something about you. You see, you see, you see, 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 Peter, Peter, like the disciples, if you read the first part of this chapter, it tells us is that they had gone back to fishing. Not bad, bad, not been a bad profession. They'd gone back to fishing. They'd gone back to what was familiar, gone back to what was comfortable. And I don't know if I'm looking at somebody right now that, you know, Easter was a couple of weeks ago, but you done gone back. You said it. You said, I ain't going to eat no more chocolate. I ain't going to eat no more potato chips. I ain't going to eat no more sweets. I, I'm going to give up on fast food. I'm going to just do these things for Lent. But Easter's over, and you have. It, it, it's not that you didn't have a good intention. It's not that you didn't want to stay on the straight and narrow. It's not that you didn't want to stay a, a, a debt free. But 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 you 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 after you went through those forty days of Lent and that whole week of Holy Week, uh, it, it was so easy to go back to shopping online. It was so easy to go back to playing Wordle on the computer. It was oh, it was so easy to go back to Facebook and Insta. It was so easy to go back to doing those things. It was so easy easy to going back to and right there at the midst of them at that great big old fish fry after they cut all of these fish Jesus rolls up on Peter and Jesus says I bet you wonder where I've been Search to find the love within. I came back to let you know. Got a thing for you. See, y'all need. Pray for him, pray for him. And you watching online, you ain't no better because you was up there doing. Jesus comes back and says, I'm back, Peter, and, and I'm back because I, I love you. I'm back because I care about you. I'm back because there's work for you to do. You, you see what I'm saying, Christian friends, is that, yes, we are a couple of weeks removed from the resurrection Sunday, but we are always in a resurrection season. We're a couple of weeks removed from, from, from getting up early, knowing that the stone has been rolled away, but, but it's also we are, are in a season, y'all, for us to, to let our love lead us in such a way that, that we are following God's commitment. You see, total commitment, number one, demands the following the leadership of another, primarily the Holy Spirit. And I don't want y'all to get, get, to get afraid and get scared here, but, but, but to be a believer, you got to follow the Holy Spirit. That, that, that's not reserved for the Pentecostal and the holiness. That's not reserved for the house of prayer. That's not reserved for the storefront churches. But, but mainline denomination folk, United Methodists, Disciples of Christ, Presbyterians, uh, Episcopalians, anybody who calls on the name of the Lord needs to follow the Holy Spirit. Uh, number two, in total commitment demands of the cross, that is death to self. Jesus says in verse 19, follow me. He's trying to help them understand is that you can't be all that you are supposed to be until you let me be who I need to be. Uh, Jesus was saying to Peter, it says, total commitment demands, number three, undivided attention to one's own task. You see, Peter was, I'll get to this a little bit later, Peter was more concerned about what John was doing, and Peter's more concerned about the other disciples, and Jesus was saying, Peter, take care of yourself. 
Number four, total commitment demands bearing witness to Jesus Christ. You see, commitment, dedication, y'all, total commitment requires following the leadership of the Holy Spirit. For Jesus seemed to be referring to Peter's whole life, ringing in his earlier years, what he did as a young man and what he was going to have to do as an older man. Jesus was challenging Peter, y'all, to serve him. He says, feed my sheep. He was calling Peter to total commitment. And total commitment, my friends, requires following the leadership of the Holy Spirit. You see, the Holy Spirit, Brother Grant, as you uh, you continue in your ministry, find out that the Holy Spirit is like gasoline in your tank. It doesn't matter how, car, how, how, how nice the leather is in your car. It doesn't matter if you have surround sound in your automobile. It doesn't matter if you have power windows or old school roll up down. Do anybody remember to roll up down the windows like that? Do they still make cars like that? I'm dating myself. Amen. Amen. It doesn't matter if, if, if you've if you got a, 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 a telephone in your car. It doesn't matter. All the accoutrements of, of an automobile. If you don't have gasoline, you ain't going nowhere. If you don't have the Holy Spirit, you ain't going nowhere. If you don't have God's Spirit in your heart, it doesn't matter how many times you can say the Apostle Creed. It doesn't matter how many books of the Bible you know. It doesn't matter how many times you pray, you got to have the Holy Spirit. You see, when, when Peter was young, he, he girded himself. He, he dressed himself. He walked where he wanted to walk. And, and before he knew Christ, he ran his own life as he will. Before he knew Christ, he talked as he will. Before he knew Christ, he did what he wanted. Before he knew Christ, he chose the pleasures of his desire. Before he knew Christ, he went where he wished. Before he knew Christ, he chose the profession that he... Am I talking to Peter this morning because before you knew Christ you it wasn't that you did not want to go to work it wasn't you did not want to have things but you did it based upon your own agenda I mean can we talk about happy hour before you knew Christ <laughs> that, that, that may be happy somebody's happy hour right now amen Can, you, can, can, we, can we talk about vacation before you knew Christ? Can, 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 can we just talk about, you know, your spending habits before you knew Christ? Can, can, can we just talk about your family time before you knew Christ? Can we talk about relationships before you knew Christ? This is what Jesus is saying to Peter. Peter, I love you so much. Is that before you knew me, you were just going through the motion without the notion. But because you now know me, now we're in a relationship. Not only do you change the way you walk and change the way you talk and change the way you think, you now change who you are. What do we say in the ministry of recovery? We say it all the time. You have to change your neighbor and your neighborhood. You cannot advance doing the same things you used to do and going the same places you used to go and thinking the same way you used to think if you're going to be all that God wants you to be. When he was younger, before he ever came to know Christ, Peter was able to live and do what he wanted to do. But, but because he is now committed, because he is now following the lead, because he is now doing what God calls him to do, Jesus is saying, you got to love me, but you have to love with total commitment total commitment. Let me see if I can explain this to you from the story of Walter Carr. Don't you, I don't know if you know his story, but Walter Carr lived, y'all, in a small town outside of Birmingham, Alabama. And one morning when Jenny Lemmy found herself about to move, Walter Carr showed up on her front steps. He showed up on his front steps early because he worked for the Bellhop Moving Company. The Bellhop Moving Company had hired Walter, and the day before he was assigned up, excuse me, to show up at Jenny's house to help her move, Walter's car broke down. It broke down so much so that his first day of the job, he was scheduled to be there at work, but he would have been late. So what Walter did, y'all, in rural Alabama, 
Alabama, he started walking, walked 14 miles, y'all, to this house to help these people move. Walked to y'all on walking to the, to the house at 4.30 in the morning was picked up by the police officer. Police officers picked him up. As they picked him up with suspicion, he explained his situation and he explained to them, look, I'm going to my job, my first day on the job, my car broke down, but in order for me to fulfill my commitment, I had to put Pat and Turner on the road and put Pat one foot in front of it and turn, okay, y'all know about Pat and Turner, right? It so happened that Walter, y'all, walked to this house. When he rung the doorbell, nobody else from the bellhop company was there. He showed up ready to work. His, his, his client says, why are you here? She explained, he explained to her exactly what I just told you in his story, y'all. Now, here is how it twisted or shifted in the right direction. Because of his commitment, because of his follow through, the owner of the company not only rewarded Walter with a paycheck, but it gave him a new car. Okay, you missed it. Walter was granted a car, y'all, because of his commitment to fulfill what he is told was supposed to do. Walter, y'all, was blessed, y'all, with something not that he wanted, but something that he needed. And I think I'm looking at somebody right now who could say on this Sunday morning, Reverend, that's what I needed. I needed to hear a word that if I put my faith in Almighty God, God will supply all of my needs. I needed to be encouraged that if I think less of myself and more of God, God, God will see me through. When that's what I needed. I, I like the words of Muhammad Ali. He says it this way. Only, our, our, our only hope lies in the power of our love, generosity, tolerance, and understanding, and our commitment to making the world a better place for all. Hmm. You see, when Peter was old and mature, the Holy Spirit, the Bible says, would dress him and lead him and carry him to places that he would not choose to go on his own. And I just got to drop my kickstand right there and give a shout out to all of those people who have an active AARP card. Put a smile on your face behind that mask. If, if you are an active AARP care, card care member, I want you to know that when you get old, you will go places that you normally would not go. And the older you get, people will take you places that you normally would not go. I'm not saying it because I'm righteous. I'm saying it because it's right there in the Bible. The Bible tells us in essence, that, that, that we will be mature enough, shall we say, to be in the company, shall we say, of people and circumstances, shall we say, for, our glo for God's glory and our benefit. You see, yes, this implies the kind of death that Peter was going to, 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 to give back to, to God. But what God was saying through Jesus Christ is that, Peter, I need you to feed my sheep while you are young. Feed my sheep while you are able. Feed my sheep while you are capable. Feed my sheep. Don't wait until the children leave. Don't wait until you get out of debt. Don't wait until you get a better job. Don't wait until you get married. Don't wait until you get separate. Don't wait for something else to happen in your life. You need to serve God now. You need to do God's will now. Don't put off what you think you're going to do tomorrow. Tomorrow is not promised. Here are four words I believe God was saying to Peter through Jesus Christ. To feed my sheep, Peter, you will have to live the life that the Spirit will. Do what the Spirit wanted. Work as the Spirit will and go where the Spirit wish. Again, you got to live. You got to do. You got to work. You got to go. Come on, say it. Live. Do. Work. Go. Come on, say it like live. Do. Work. Okay, you can't see it. AV, give it to them a little bit. They can't even see it because they can't even, they can't see it because they can't see it. So we're going to blow it up for you one more time right here. You've got to live, do, work, and go. You've got to live the life that God wants you to live. That means that I sometimes going to have to do some things. Well, I'm the only one. Didn't laugh at the joke. I'm the only one. They didn't smile. I'm, I'm the only one that kind of spoke up. I, I'm going to have to do some things that the Spirit wanted me to do. I wasn't planning on coming to church. Two services? Singing in the choir? Come on, Dr. Monroe. We can do it at one time. I, I, I'm going to have to work. 
Right. Work without, without pay? Well, let me just say parenthetically that the boss that I work for yeah. is going to give me, thank you, Brother Lester, the one that I serve, I, I got an eternal retirement plan. And I'm making sure where the streets are paved with gold and the Sabbath has no end, I, I want to make sure that that boss says, well done, good and faithful servants. You're going to have to go where the Spirit wish you to go. See, Jesus again was speaking to Peter, and, 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 and please remember that Peter uh, had a wife, according to the Bible, and, and it's implied that Peter at this time, Sister Pam, who was into the ministry as a young man and possibly could have been a newlywed, for the Bible tells us that Peter's wife supported him in his ministry, which is an implication, y'all, that not only did Peter uh, 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 follow the Lord, but Peter's spouse followed the Lord. So married folk, let me tell you one more thing time. Here it is. If you married, you're going to have to live the life that the Spirit willed you to live. If you are married, you're going to have to do what the Spirit calls you to do. If you are married, the Spirit needs to come to where you live and where you lay and where you play. When you are married, you have to go where the Spirit wishes you to go. The Bible implies that because of Peter's faithfulness and his lifestyle and his life giving, y'all, that, that he was called to serve the people, to feed the people. Point number one of this text is that the call of Christ is total commitment, just, just not just commitment. Total commitment demands that we follow the leadership of the Holy Spirit. Leadership of the Holy Spirit. I, I'm glad we have uh, public servants who are running for office here, and, and we always embrace that. Now, 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 Brother Patch, I don't know why you're sitting back there. You know the winner's seat is always up here, the third row from the left. Everybody who sits on that third, right there where Dr. Matlin is, that, that's where a politician, I'm just saying, that's, now, now, I, I say it kind of tongue in cheek, they, they, they also have a row down here, one, I looked down at one time, and, and all four people on that, that row where Miss Joyce was were pregnant too, so I, I don't know. I'm just saying coincidental, right? Politicians over here, expecting mamas over here. I, I don't know. I don't know. But, but what I found, and, and I want to give a quote to, 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 to Anne Lamont. Anne Lamont says that lighthouses don't go running all over the island looking for boats to save. They just stand there shining. When you are a leader, you don't have to run for re-election after you get elected, you just serve, and you don't get reelected. Mm. When, 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 you, when you are a leader, you don't have to ask for recognition. Somebody going to recognize you for doing a good job. When you are a leader, you don't have to try to, to, try, try to get a special parking place. They're going to reserve a parking spot for you because you're doing great work. You see... Paul, Paul, Peter, Peter is instructed and he's encouraged, y'all, that, that you will not no longer dress the way that you used to dress and walk the way you used to walk. The Holy Spirit will lead you. Point number two of the text is the call of Christ involves persecution. The true believer lives a sacrificial and godly life, bearing a strong testimony and a strong witness. A true believer lives a sacrificial and godly life, a sacrificial and godly God, a life that you're going to have to sacrifice in order to go where God wants you to go. Let me see if I can get some help to illustrate this by one of the New Yorkers that I have fallen in love with, Damon John. Don't know if you know Damon John's story. You may have seen him on Shark Tank, but I know him from FUBU. For us, by us. Come on, New Yorkers, fool boo. You know Damon, born in Brooklyn, raised in Hollis, Queen. He, he is a multi-millionaire, net worth of $350 million, fool boo with $6 billion of annual sales. This is a man who went to school or one week and, and worked another week, worked ser serving tables at Red Lobster, working jobs, passing out flyers, $2 an hour. This is a man, y'all, with a vision whose mother mortgaged 
their house in order to go into business. This is a man, y'all, who recognized I got to be totally committed to the task. Don't know who I'm talking to this Sunday morning, but if you are an entrepreneur, you have to be totally committed to the task. It's not a part-time thing. It's not a half-time thing. You've got to be totally committed. And what Damon teaches me, oh, I was so excited to read this, what it said, Brother Jay, his quote that I got to give to you is he says, five days a week, I read my goals before I go to sleep. And when I wake up, uh, then there are 10 goals around family, uh, health, and business with expiration dates on them. I like that because every innovation has an expiration. Every beginning has an end. And many times, y'all, we fail the commitment part of our life because we forget the expiration date. God says there's some things in your life that have expired. There are some situations in your life that have expired. And help me, Holy Ghost, there are some people in your life that have You, you've got to say, God, for you I live, for you I die, for God I serve you with all of my heart, for God I want to do your will, for God I, I'm going to, going to do what, not what I want to be done, but what you would call me to do. You see, God has a way of, of breaking us and, and building us, but God can't build us till God break us. And here's a shout for somebody this Sunday morning that God specializes in broken things. Can you say broken things? See, see, God uses broken things, broken soil to produce a crop, broken clouds to give us rain, broken grain to give us bread, broken bread to give us strength. It's, it's the broken alabaster box that gives forth the perfumes. It, see, see, God says if, if anyone be in Christ, he or she is a new creature. All things are passed away. Behold, all things become new. Peter, y'all, was weeping. He was bitterly broken, but God gave him some mighty power. Here is the last point I want to make, y'all, today. Commitment, total commitment requires the cross, the death, and self. I like the way the Holy Spirit moved with the choir. I had no idea that they were singing. They hung and wide, they stretched and wide. But for you and me, he died. That's love. It requires us to go to the cross. But again, we can't have Easter Sunday unless we have a Good Friday death. We cannot have resurrection unless there's something planted that dies in the ground. We, we have to go through something to get to our destination. And you see, there's a warning in the text because it's not printed in our, in, in our service today, but read it when you get home. It, from verses 20 and 23, total commitment. Peter is asking Jesus about John, about the other disciples. And here's where Jesus reminds Peter, like I believe he's telling us, he's, he's rebuking Peter. He's, he's saying, Peter, don't get distracted. He's saying, Peter, uh, 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 uh. Don't wish you had somebody else's ministry. He's saying, Peter, don't compare your call to somebody else. He's saying, Peter, uh, 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 be careful not to copy or to conform to, to somebody else's ministry. He's saying, Peter, quit worrying about John. Stop meddling. Okay, okay, I went old school with you. That's a word that we don't use in our lexicon these days, but meddling. Meddling. Can you, can you help me say an old school word? Say meddling. Meddling. Matter of fact, my smile is the neighbor with your, with your face mask on and say, stop meddling. If you don't know what meddling is, find somebody with an AARP card. They'll tell you what meddling is. Jesus challenged Peter to concentrate on your own call and task. Concentrate on what God has called you to do. Now, number two, focus your attention, your will, your energy, and your efforts on your own call. Number three, he says, realize that God knows where you can best serve. And God calls you to that task. 
That's why, that's why, that's why I got to give a major shout out today, Brother Phil, to, to Angel Thomas. Don't know if you know her story, but Angel Thomas, y'all, was born and found on a staircase in Greensboro, North Carolina in 1999. Angel Thomas, y'all, was left as an abandoned child. But now next week on May the 7th, Angel Thomas will graduate president of her school, y'all, president of her class at Embry-Riddle Aeronautical University. University. Wait a minute, you missed your shout there. Angel, y'all, was an abandoned child left under a staircase. But next week, May 7th, she would graduate with honors as president of her class at Embry Riddle Aeronautical University. She was an abandoned child, y'all, left for nobody else to come back, but she was found by somebody. And because she was faithful in her upbringing, she graduates next week, y'all, as a an honor student at Embry Riddle Aeronautical University. Okay, an angel, isn't that a good name for somebody who's been left abandoned? Isn't that uh, some hope for somebody who may be hopeless this Sunday morning? This is Angel's story. Growing up in Guilford County, going to Andrews High School, Angel found herself, y'all, in 2018 as Miss Greens, Miss Teen Greensboro. And 20, uh, 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 that same year, 2018, she was a first runner-up of Miss Teen North Carolina. An abandoned baby that was left on the staircase, but because she was loved, because she followed her commitment, she now graduates with honor, y'all, from Emory Riddle Aeronautical University. Here's what Angel says about going to college. She gives some good advice for college students, but I think for many of us beyond the college uh, season of our life. She says, it's okay to change your mind. You don't have to have everything figured out throughout your whole journey. Just follow your heart and find your happiness as a student. Now, Angel, y'all, is saying, don't Think about where I've come from. You got to remember where I'm going. Those were her words from her mom. She says, honey, it's not how you start, it's how you end up. And you see, that's my word when love leads. It's, it's not how you start or what you find yourself in is where you end up. It's, it's not how, how fast you come out of the starting gate. It's how consistent you are to cross the finish line. It's not necessarily that you are the number one on the draft board because I remember if you watch any of that this weekend, you will see those football players who had great dreams, but they didn't get drafted. But somebody's still has some heart inside of them that somehow, some way, they will play. I'm looking at some number one draftees right now. You were not picked this week. You were not picked last week. You were not picked last year. You were not picked year before that. You were not picked last decade. But I think God is picking and choosing you on this Sabbath day. And God is saying, my child, to whom I love, I want you to go forward, to give yourself away, to give your very self to what God God has in store for you. My friends, this day, this moment, this hour, I ask you to be not just like those that were in the story of our sermon, but be like Peter who found himself almost to the point, God, what you mean? Do you, do I love you? You see, it's okay for us to not just question God, but we need to question ourselves. Do we, do we really love the Lord? Am I really serving the Lord? Because when I look at my actions and I see my faith walk, people who don't know me might not know that I serve the Lord. When I take a checkup from the neck up and I do that evaluation, I look in the mirror, somebody may have some doubt. Do you love me? Do you care? The song says, I simply give myself away so that you can use me. Wow. Thank you so much for being a part of this worship service. If this service helped you, please subscribe, like us, let us know how we can be of a greater value to you and your spiritual growth. Again, this is Pastor Cannon from the C.N. Jenkins Memorial Presbyterian Church. Thanking you so much for worshiping with us today.
Our words of benediction and blessing. May the Lord bless you and keep you. May heaven shine upon you and give you grace and peace. May this day be the best day of the rest of your life. In the name of the Father, Son, and the Holy Ghost, and all of God's children, shout together, hallelujah. Y'all have a great day.